Let's talk about modules. We have talked about a variety of different modules here on Chalk Talk over the years. But there is one type of module that we haven't covered until now in the many, many years that Chalk Talk has been on the air. Any ideas? If you guessed Peltier modules, you're right. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Do you need precise temperature control? Does your application need to be cooled below ambient temperature? If you answered yes to either of those questions, a Peltier module may be the best solution for you. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Rex Halleck from CUI Devices and I discuss the limitations and unique benefits of Peltier modules, how CUI Devices' architect structure can make a big difference when it comes to thermal stress and fatigue of Peltier modules, and how you can get started using a Peltier module in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Devices. Hi, Rex. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you. So we're talking about Peltier modules today. But Rex, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? Yeah, so today we'll start off with a technology overview. Then we'll go over how to select a Peltier module. We will go through CUI Devices product offering. And lastly, have a look at some additional resources available on CUI Devices website. Excellent. Now, I'm not sure we have covered Peltier modules here on Chalk Talk yet. So, Rex, can you give us a rundown on exactly what a Peltier module is? Yeah, a Peltier module is a thermoelectric cooling device that functions like a heat pump, uh, essentially transferring heat from one side and expunging it to the other, also known as pulling heat out of one location and moving it to a different location. On the images on the right side of this slide, you'll see the construction of a Peltier. They're packed full of thermal couples, which are positive and negative charged semiconductor pellets, which when a current is applied, they react together to create cooling and or heating. And the cooling is then realized on the ceramic plates that hold the semiconductor pellets in place. The bottom image on this slide shows a cross-section of a Peltier when in operation. The heat is pulled out from something on the cold side and released on the hot side. Important to note is that Peltiers are a rather unique and high-end cooling solutions. Not all applications are going to need them, and certainly not all customers will want to pay the premium for a Peltier, but there are situations where an application will require a Peltier where other cooling solutions aren't getting the job done. You know, it's always good to keep in mind that Peltiers are not replacements to other cooling methods, such as DC fans or traditional heat sinks, and they're certainly not low-cost solutions. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Rex... When would you choose this kind of module? Yeah, so one of the things to figure out if you need a Peltier module is to ask yourself if your application requires any of these things, such as precise temperature control, cooling below ambient temperatures, and faster immediate temperature response. So, you know, if the answer is yes to any of those things, your application would likely benefit from a Peltier. And speaking of benefits, the benefits of the Peltiers are kind of exactly that. Precise temperature control, cooling below ambient temperatures, and immediate temperature response. They also are solid state devices, so they don't have any fluids or moving parts. And because of their solid state design, they're also low maintenance and they last quite a long time. Cool. Now, considering the kinds of benefits you just mentioned, what kind of markets would this kind of module be a good fit for? Yeah, so here are some applications. We'll get into a little more nitty gritty stuff later on. But when it comes to consumer market, you can think of refrigeration applications or heat pumps. They are used in the scientific and industrial market for lab equipment, dehumidifiers, controlling temperature of laser diodes. And then also in electronic component applications, particularly for low noise applications where something like a cooling fan would be too loud. So Rex, can you share with us an example of these modules in a real life application? 
Yeah. So one of the things that we're probably all familiar with is this application, which would be an ophthalmic laser. The industry here would be medical. And what you can think of would be LASIK laser eye surgery, which many of us have undergone in our lives. The Peltier in this application is used to keep the laser diodes at a steady temperature to obtain a constant emission wavelength. And this helps to allow the actual LASIK operation to be performed not only accurately, but very quickly. So Rex, are there any specific concerns that we should keep in mind when it comes to Peltier modules? Absolutely. So kind of as I mentioned earlier, lifetime is a common question when it comes to Peltiers. The good news is that Peltiers in general last a lot longer than some more traditional cooling solutions like a DC fan or a blower. However, there are some limitations to Peltiers. In particular, thermal fatigue affects the solder that is normally used to bond the copper to the semiconductor pellets and the sintering that forms the bond between the copper and ceramic. This is also known as thermal expansion and contraction, or slight variations in the physical size of the pieces of the Peltier module. What this does is it causes small cracks and has a negative effect on the performance of the Peltier over time. As I said earlier, they're solid state devices, so we're talking a rather long time in general here. But this thermal fatigue is the major limitation and failure point when it comes to Peltier modules. One thing I want to touch on real quick before we move forward is in the coming slides, I'm going to be referencing a term called thermal cycles. And a thermal cycle is just the term used for the cooling cycle of the Peltier, which is bringing the temperature from the starting temp down to the target temp. Ah, okay. So Rex, can you explain the thermal stress and fatigue you mentioned earlier? What would that look like in terms of the structure of the module? Yeah, absolutely. So as these internal semiconductor pellets expand, they put force and stress on these other pieces of the Peltier. And what that can lead to is cracks in the ceramic itself, which then would affect the temperature on the ceramic and thus the cooling or heating of your application. On the left image of this slide, you see the typical structure of a Peltier module, two ceramic plates, then a layer of solder, then a layer of copper, then another layer of solder, and then you have the internal semiconductor pellets. Also on the hot side, you have a center layer. On the right image on this slide, you can see the same cross-section of a Peltier, but with CUI Devices Innovative Architect Structure, which is a value-added feature. And what this is, is it is a thermally conductive resin layer on the cold side between the copper and the ceramic. And this absorbs some of the expansion and contraction caused by these large temperature fluctuations and therefore reduces the stress on the internal components of the Peltier. This thermal stress can cause degradation of performance over time. Well, by adding in the Arctech structure, the thermally conductive resin layer, we reduce the thermal stress and in turn increase the potential lifetime of a Peltier. So Rex, what does this Arctech structure bring to the table in terms of benefits? Yeah, so <laughs> it brings a lot of benefits. You know, I kind of mentioned the thermal resin layer. In addition to this thermal resin layer, we also use a high temperature solder rated up to 235 degrees Celsius. And we also use particularly large semiconductor pellets inside of our Peltiers to assist in uniform temperature across the surface of the Peltier ceramic. And I'll touch on that a bit more in the next slide. The major advantage of the architect structure is highlighted in the graph on the right-hand side of this slide. And what this graph shows is the number of thermal cycles, as I mentioned earlier, starting temp down to target temp, over time, and the percentage change in thermal resistance. For purposes of these slides, we'll be using a thermal cycle of 60 degrees, so starting temp of 80 degrees and bringing it down to 20 degrees, which is also known as a delta T of 60 degrees C, which I'll talk more about when we look at actual specifications. But in this graph, you can see standard construction Peltier modules without the architect structure start seeing a change in thermal resistance pretty quickly, you know, some down at 500 cycles and certainly by 3000 cycles, you see a major change in thermal resistance. 
However, if you look at the lines kind of on the lower portion of the graph, these are the products that have the architect structure that we tested, and we see very minimal performance degradation at the same number of thermal cycles. Um, and in fact, we see little performance degradation well beyond and up to 30,000 cycles. So really, this graph kind of highlights the main benefit of the architect structure. One last thing I want to note on this is that not all CUI devices, Peltier modules, have the architect structure. And uh, the main reason is that for very small Peltiers, in general, 15 millimeters or smaller, you don't need this feature because the thermal stress, that expansion and contraction, is rather minimal due to the small number of thermal couples inside of the module. I see. So how does the CUI devices module compare to similar devices on the market today? Yeah, so aside from the thermal resistance change that I mentioned in the previous slide, that we use particularly large semiconductor pellets inside of our Peltiers. And what this does is it creates a uniform temperature across the surface of the Peltier module. So as you can see in these images that we took with a thermal camera, the top pictures are a CUI devices module and you can see that the ceramic is essentially the same temperature across the entire surface. And that is due in large part to the larger pellets that we use inside of our modules. On the bottom portion of this slide, we took thermal images of a similar competitor's module. And you can see that there's little pockets kind of scattered all over the surface of the ceramics that are different colors. And what that means is it's a different temperature on those little spots on the ceramic plates. Cool. Now, you also mentioned applications in the scientific research arena as well, right? Yeah. So an application that can directly benefit from CUI devices architect structure is a PCR thermal cycler machine. This would fall into the scientific research industry. And these machines are extremely important to medical research in terms of finding causes and cures for infectious disease. What the PCR machine does is it makes copies of a specific sample of DNA through the process of thermal cycling. And by making copies of small samples of DNA, it allows scientists to amplify the amount of DNA into a large enough kind of amount to study it in detail. Peltiers allow a large temperature range and a high temperature stability and precision for this particular type of thermal cycle process that's extremely important because lives truly do depend on it in this case. PCR machines are a, really a critical part of medical research that often isn't really recognized, but uh, really, really important. And Peltiers are a huge piece of the PCR machine. That's super cool. So Rex, if my audience is excited to use one of these modules in their next design, are there any other considerations or products they need to keep in mind? Yeah, absolutely. At the very beginning of our discussion, I mentioned that Peltiers are not replacements to more traditional cooling methods like fans or heat sinks. Uh, rather, you'll pretty much always see Peltiers used with some of these other thermal products. In particular, you'll pretty much always see Peltiers used with heat sinks, and you'll often see Peltiers used with both heat sinks and fans. And the reason the heat sink is required is because of the heat on the hot side of the Peltier. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, a Peltier functions like a heat pump. It moves heat from one location to a different location. But if that heat doesn't have anywhere to go, the heat will end up just coming back into the Peltier and heating up the entire thing instead of cooling one side. So that's why you need a heat sink on the hot side to actually dissipate the heat that's being pumped out from the cool side. You know, and then you may also see Peltiers used with a DC fan in addition to a heat sink. You know, and the fan can just blow air onto the heat sink to help dissipate the heat faster. Lastly, it's also good practice to have some type of thermal interface material to make the bond between the Peltier and the heat sink nice and clean or reduce any potential air pockets in there. Lastly, some other things that may be useful to incorporate into a design would be something like a thermal sensor to monitor the temperature of the object being cooled. And then, of course, you're going to need a power supply to actually power up the Peltier module. So what about the consumer market you mentioned earlier? What would an application look like here? 
Yeah. So an application in the consumer market that we've seen is a security camera. The Peltiers here are used to cool the image sensors in the camera to minimize noise caused by electromagnetic interference. And what this does is it really sharpens up the image portrayed on the monitor or the screen. Cool. Now, what are the biggest takeaways that you want my audience to keep in mind when it comes to Peltier modules? Yeah, so there's really one big takeaway when it comes to Peltiers is really just to remember that Peltiers transfer heat. They don't absorb heat and they function like a heat pump, meaning they cool one side and move the heat to the other. So it's always important to remember that you need to get rid of that extra heat somehow. You know, and you also need to consider the power supply that you're using to power the Peltier. The heat generated from that should also be dissipated. Okay, so what kind of specifications are we talking about here? There's five key specifications when it comes to Peltiers. The first is called the Q or the Q max, and that's measured in watts, and that is the heat load transfer, otherwise known as the amount of heat that needs to be removed from the system. The next one is the delta T or the change in temperature, and this is the temperature difference between the hot and the cold side of the Peltier. You know, engineers need to consider heat sinks, fans, operating conditions of the system when determining what is needed. The next one would be size. So your physical size of the Peltier module, what can be accommodated in the application. And then your IMAX, which is your input current, and your VMAX, which is your input voltage. And one note on the IMAX and the VMAX ratings is that they're not like a DC fan's voltage and current rating where you drive the fan at 12 volts and that's that. In general, Peltiers, you don't actually drive them using the maximum ratings. Rather, they should be driven a little bit lower than their maximum ratings because if you operate the Peltier at the maximum ratings, your delta T or your change in temperature will be zero and thus achieve no cooling. This is a very, very important piece of determining if a Peltier works in your application. In fact, it's really the only way to determine if a Peltier is going to work for your application. Before we can read these graphs to determine if a Peltier will work, we need to know a few data points. We need to know the heat transfer or the Q, which we covered in the previous slide. We need to know the temperature difference between the hot and cold side of the module and the hot side temperature that you're expecting in your application. So for purposes of this exercise, we will just use, theoretically, someone needs to get rid of 20 watts. They expect the difference between the hot and cold side of the module to be 20 degrees Celsius and the hot side temp to be 30 degrees Celsius. So in order to read these graphs, the first place you're going to start is with your heat transfer of 20 watts. So we're going to go ahead and mark 20 watts on the heat pumped area of the graph, which is where that little one is. And then you go down to the delta T area of the graph. We know that it's 20 in this instance, so we kind of make a little mark there as well. And then we draw a line to where those two points would intersect on the graph. And it looks like it is just above the 2.4 amp line. So we will go ahead and call it 2.5 amps. The next part of this exercise is to go up into the upper portion of the graph and find that same current rating on the upper lines. So 2.5 is what we found below. So we will mark 0.4 on the graph there. And then we will draw a straight line over to the input voltage and it intersects there right at about eight volts. So what this tells us is that to achieve the heat transfer of 20 watts at a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius with a hot side temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, customer would need to drive this Peltier at eight volts and 2.5 amps. Moving on into an actual CUI devices product in a real life situation, here is a performance graph for our CP85134H. This is a 15 by 15 by 4 millimeter module with an IMAX rating of 8.5 amps and a VMAX rating of 2.1 volts. 
So for purposes of this, let's say an engineer needs to pump around five watts with a delta T of 25 C, and they expect the hot side to sit around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Step one would be to find the Q on the heat pumped portion. In this case, it would be five watts. We would then find the value of 25 degrees Celsius on the delta T axis of the graph. We would draw two lines to where they intersect, which looks like it intersects just above the 5.1 amp line. So we will call it 5.5 amps. We'll then draw a line up into the upper portion of the graph to where it intersects that same current rating of 5.1 amps. And then we'll finally draw our line over to the input voltage portion of the graph to where it intersects that axis. And it looks like it's about 1.4 amps. So if a engineer was looking at our CP85134H and they needed to pump five watts with a delta T of 25C, they would drive this module at 1.4 volts and 5.5 amps, which is well within the maximum ratings of 2.1 volts and 8.5 amps. If the customer were to need to pump eight watts under these same conditions, you would go through this whole process again, and you would see that it's actually not possible. The only way to determine if a Peltier works for you is to understand how to read these graphs. Okay. So speaking of CUI devices, can we look specifically at what you guys offer in terms of Peltier modules? Here is a quick snapshot of our Peltier product offering. We have a pretty wide range of available products. We kind of bucket them into three different groups. The first being single stage modules, which are by far and away the most common type of Peltier out there. They consist of the semiconductor pellets and ceramic plates, kind of what we've been looking at so far. We have uh, 140 models representing the majority of our portfolio. A couple of interesting products in this single stage bucket are micro Peltier modules, which are as small as 3.4 by 3.4 millimeters in length and width. The next bucket is our multi-stage modules, which are essentially two or more Peltiers stacked on top of each other. And this allows for a greater temperature differential between the hot and cold sides of the Peltier because one Peltier is cooling the hot side of the other Peltier. And the last kind of product bucket is cooling units, which provide a higher level of cooling because they have an attached radiator and heat sink. They also come with mounting holes for easy installation into systems. In general, single stage modules will be less expensive than their equivalent multi-stage or cooling unit counterparts. However, there's an extremely broad range in terms of price and performance in all three of these buckets. So it's not always the case where a single stage is going to be cheaper than a multi-stage product. I see. Now, what kind of options do I have with these kind of modules? Is there any kind of customization available if I need it? Yeah, absolutely. So CUI devices, when it comes to all of our products, we offer customizations. And when it comes to Peltiers, there's kind of three main customizations we see. The first and most common would be a wire assembly, such as adjusting the wire length, the gauge, the color, or adding connector terminals and housings on the end of the wires for easy installation on the customer end. The next customization we see is a full ground up custom product where we'd modify the shape or the size of the Peltier and the performance characteristics to meet a customer's needs. The last customization that we do is a thermal assembly, and that is essentially a Peltier with an attached heat sink or a fan. Peltiers are always going to need to be used with some of these other products, so we can make the whole assembly for a customer and ship it as one unit. So earlier, you also mentioned Peltier modules being a good fit in the telecom arena as well. So can we look at that kind of application? Yeah. So you know, our last application example here will be in the telecom industry. And the application is an optical transceiver, which is a device that converts electrical signals into light signals, which allows for high data transmission at very far distances. This is actually a critical piece of 5G technology and allows the platform to operate at the rate that it does. 
Peltiers can be used in this application to control the temperature of the laser diodes in the optical transceiver. 5G telecom standards require that these diodes be kept below 70 degrees Celsius. The small form factor of these optical transceivers partnered with limited airflow and the need for precise temperature control present a perfect opportunity for Peltiers. You know, you might see optical transceivers in fiber optic network cabling for commercial and residential internet services. Fantastic. Now, Rex, if my audience needs some assistance with their designs, what kind of resources do you guys have to help? Yeah, we have a number of resources available on our website with the click of a button. So we offer 3D models on all of our products to help streamline the design process, saving an engineer time and resources. They are available for free for download in all major mechanical CAD formats. We also offer a number of calculators on our website, such as airflow conversion calculator, thermal conversion calculators, and these basically convert between common units of measurement for specific specifications. We offer a pretty robust product search on our website where a customer can go in and input the specifications they need or they expect, and then our search will spit out a product that meets their criteria. Our product pages on our website are loaded up with all kinds of stuff. Customer can check the stock available in our distribution channel. They can download our CAD models, request a quote, request a sample, view our data sheet, as well as view our Rojas and REACH compliance documents. And lastly, on the resource front, we have a huge amount of blog posts and videos and technical papers available for our customers to help educate themselves on these products. As it relates to Peltiers, some of the key posts I like to highlight are the How to Design a Peltier Module System blog post, which helps customers with design considerations when looking at Peltiers. Also is our Arctech Structure App Note, which is a major help in explaining our value add architect feature, which is truly a huge selling point for CUI devices. Excellent. Well, this has been a lot to take in today, Rex. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, absolutely. First off, Peltiers are unique cooling solutions. They offer a level of cooling that you can't get anywhere else. And because of this, applications will either require them or they don't. Peltiers are not replacements to heat sinks or fans. For example, if an engineer is getting away with using a heat sink right now and is only looking for something like a cost down, they should not consider a Peltier because rather they are always used in conjunction with some type of heat sink and very often used in conjunction with a fan as well. Peltiers can cool below ambient temperature. They offer precise temperature control and spot cooling and offer immediate and quick temperature response. You know, CUI device's major value add when it comes to Peltiers is our architect structure, which is a thermally conductive resin layer that absorbs thermal expansion and contraction and reduces impact on internal semiconductor pellets, which results in longer lifetimes. We carry a broad range of Peltiers, including single stage, multi stage modules, and cooling units. Customizations and modified standards are no issue for CUI devices, kind of our bread and butter. You know, applications are broad, serving industries, including consumer, medical, scientific, industrial, you know, and many more. Lastly, CUI Devices website is your best friend to find good information on Peltiers, what they are, how to use them, a lot of resources available with the click of a button. Excellent. Well, this has been super cool today. Thank you so much for joining me, Rex. Yep. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. 